Good evening. Welcome to the Sunderland Select Board. Today is Monday, the 8th of February, already starting to roll right into the middle of February. We've got a packed agenda tonight. Um, <clears throat> we've got our minutes. We've got a, a brief announcement about the uh, town caucus. We've got a uh, board and then we have budget presentations from the board of assessors, the town clerk, the treasurer collector, the building commissioner, the highway department. And then we've got our usual COVID uh, update and then uh, select board town administrator updates and then any public comments. So um, without further ado, let's roll right into it tonight so we can hopefully keep things in a reasonable time frame. So just try to be uh, concise tonight, folks, so everybody can squeeze in their stuff. A lot of budget presentations. Um, so first, let's do the minutes from February uh, 1st last week. <clears throat> Motion. All right. I'll second. All right. All those in favor of the minutes from February 1st? Aye. Aye. Nice right hand there, Tom. I did, Jay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and then uh, next, we've got an announcement about the town caucus. I'm going to put that up front. <clears throat> uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. We got a note from the town clerk wanted to remind everybody that February 27th at 10 a.m. behind the building here, town caucuses are going to be a little different this year. Um, uh, 10 in the morning behind this building, February 27th. And that as of uh, today, as of last week, there were, the town clerk was notified that there are incumbents not running for the following offices, planning board, school committee, library trustee, and board of and select board. So there's four open slots right now, and people who are interested, you know, want to help contribute to their community, uh, contact the clerk. All right. <clears throat> Thanks, Scott. All right, so let's go to our first budget presentation for the Board of Assessors. Uh, so could, we get... I, could I just interrupt? I thought um, we were going to put a new business, um, an emergency uh, Board of Health. We were going to ask for a, uh, a temporary order to be put into place. I don't oh. know if you got the new, um, the new minutes. Hold on. Do you want me to pull that up? Yeah, can you pull that up for a second? Oh, I didn't know if you're going to pull up the new minutes. Oh, um, minutes? <laughs> yeah, you mean uh, the, the agenda or? The agenda. I'm so yep. sorry. Not new That's minutes, right. the new agenda. Um, I, I got it late this afternoon. Um, um, yeah, we can. That's it, fine. We can do the COVID thing first and then. <laughs> It, um, and we'll get out of your hair and we'll be done. All right. Um, <laughs> um, so um, the uh, Board of Health has called for called an emergency meeting. Um, and we wanted to also include the select board because this is, um, this is something that really, uh, I think needs discussion uh, brief, but um, bring the select board in. Um, I had a meeting yesterday morning at uh, 9 a.m. and um, Jeff was present. It was with the, um, the town um, managers as well as the boards of health regarding the University of Massachusetts and um, their recent uptick in cases. And I'm using the word uptick lightly. Uh, they currently have over 400 uh, on uh, 400 cases, positive cases, um, with uh, well over 178 cases off campus. Um, and what, as a result of that, they have ordered or <laughs> moved their status um, to, uh, they've moved up their status and they have requested, or I should say, um, ordered their students to self quarantine for 14 days, not leaving their dorms or their off campus residences for any other reason other than testing um, and medical appointments. 
Um, so as far as how we would be, the town itself would not be enforcing those orders um, as far as UMass is concerned. However, um, the enforcement for those orders uh, would be school enforcement up to even suspension uh, from school if they do not obey those orders. The, um, so because of those orders, the school requested and rightfully so, and I, I think that we should do our part to help um, because this is our community and these students are in our community and a part of our community. Um, they serve, you know, they, they eat in our restaurants, they serve us, <laughs> you know, they work in our stores, shop with us. Um, what we can do to help get, get this under control. Um, right now we do have, uh, we do have about, we're now back up to about 30 cases from six within a one week period. And the majority of those cases, I would have to say are all from UMass. So what we are proposing is the mandatory early closing order, which was rescinded on January 25th, which was a 930 order. We're proposing that go back into effect. The other thing is the capacity limit that was 25% and it was uh, rescinded today, this morning at 5 a.m. and it was moved back, move up to 40%. We're gonna propose that it go back down to 25%. Now, in order to ease our um, businesses in town, Jeff did a little legwork yesterday <laughs> and called um, our businesses the most affected ones and already spoke with them um, to kind of let them know. Uh, our town, so had Amherst did it last night, Hadley's meeting tonight. Our, our town is affected, but I think as far as most affected, I think Hadley, the big box stores, the, the um, restaurants, they're going to be mostly affected in Hadley and in Amherst. But I think we shouldn't be then a receiving point and, and not be in solidarity with our neighbors and accept people coming to us, <laughs> you know. So that's my pitch as to why. I also think that um, it's a responsible move as far as what we can do. Uh, the order, if um, Jeff wants to put it up uh, for those to read, it's pretty standard. Um, it cites the Ch Ch Mass General Laws chapter and section. It gives the closing order that the governor set, the capacity limit order that the governor set. It states why, and it states the typical enforcement and the penalties, which were the same as when they were set by the governor. We're just going backwards. In other words, putting them back into effect. What I would say is, um, I would propose that we just reassess this in two weeks and we can lift it. We can rescind our putting it back into effect. <laughs> in two weeks if things are looking good. What, so that, that was one of the things I was wondering about, like what, what metrics we were gonna use. So do we have a particular number or something that when we hit this threshold or you know, then we're gonna rescind it? Just so folks have an idea. Yeah, what, what I would prefer rather than a number because our towns are a little bit, our town is a little bit different. Like if we look, <laughs> Amherst has 489 Yep. cases. Uh, Hadley has 30 and we are just touching 30 now. Um, so I don't really want to use a number. And then I want to look at what's coming out of UMass. Um, and, and so I, I would prefer to meet with Amherst, Hadley, um, 
you know, the town administrators yep. and the on-campus health department to see where their trend is going, to yep. see if, if they can get their cases under control, then yes, we I'll res we'll rescind that right away. I mean, because the Amherst and Hadley are under a lot of pressure by their um, their economic development to not do this. I bet, yeah. We, our um, economic development, our our businesses in town work with us. You know, we've we have a great good relationships with. You know, they they want to see. They don't want to see an outbreak. Bridgeside does not want to see their waitresses coming in, you know, or lose their waitresses. You know what I mean? To, to right. They want to get them out of quarantine. <laughs> so they want to work with us. You know, um, we're very fortunate for what we have. Um, we have excellent relationships. We have a small town with excellent relationships. Um, so I'm going to assume that Hadley and Amherst are going to push, are going to get pushed around a lot more than we are. So, so Caitlin? Yes, sir. Are, are you are you looking so right now? UMass is is there up in the, they 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 call themselves high risk level right now. Yes. Are you and and so they're for the next fourteen days, starting actually last Sunday. Yesterday, yeah. They're, they're so they're in a high risk for fourteen days. So you're looking at least to look at that fourteen days and see what's happened at the end of these fourteen days. Well, yeah, because by the time um, we, you, I, I look at a 10 day period as far as getting people out of I isolation or quarantine. Yep. Um, and I think by then you'll know if there's another wave, you know, within like four or five days, we'll know if more positive tests have come in. Um, as far as whether that 14 days is now gonna go out another 10 days. <laughs> Right. Especially so, after yesterday, because you don't know how many people got together to watch Super Bowl games or whatever. So and that, well, and well, I, I know at UMass today, they, they, their their previous high was four thousand tested people. Right. They, they're pushing five thousand today. They are pushing five thousand today, but they also just switched over to a um, a symptomatic testing. Yes. So their test numbers are actually going to nose dive. So their case numbers are going to nosedive either way because they're not testing the entire, they're only testing symptomatic students. Not so everybody. Reduced population. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're only going to get a certain number of te positive tests. That's the smaller number. You get a smaller number. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Correct. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, only people with the, you know, fevers are going to come in not the mandatory everybody two times a week. So we're automatically gonna have a lower number. I yeah. just, um, I wanna make sure that, um, you know, I, I don't necessarily agree with that, but that's what it is. It is what it is and we can't control that. So, so Caitlin, can I, can I also say? Sure. So there's a very important thing. Right now, UMass is a mass, vaccination site yes. for the state of Massachusetts, yes. that is still open. The, in the um, press release from um, Subhaswamy, yep. right? He said all, all testing and all um, clinical activity is as, as set, as what, you know, is as planned, goes on as planned. So as far as as that's concerned, I have not heard anything up about that being closed. No, I, don't I, wanna... I, just want, I just wanted to say that because I, I received two telephone calls or one text, one telephone call today about questions about UMass vaccination site and testing. And I just want to I just want to let people know that UMass is still doing the community testing at the Mullen Center. And uh, if you have an appointment at UMass to get a vaccination, it's still scheduled and still, you can still go, still go. Oh, good. I'm glad that you knew that positively. I had to answer those questions of, I have not heard that it was canceled. You no, know, that you. the email yeah. that came out from the chancellor said everything is going on as yep. set. And that it, came it, out it, yesterday morning, so. It's happening. Great. 
So that's, and so that was, so my, my proposal, that is my proposal. Um, I've sent it out to the other two board members. Um, we need to vote on it, but I did want to give it to the select board um, also. And if anyone else wants to comment on it, because I'm, even though <laughs> the board of health has the power to do this, I'm not, well, I'm comfortable, but I'm not of the mind to just ram something through. So if there's something in here, or if you have a suggestion or what have you, please say something. That's why so, I brought it to a select board meeting and not just did a special <clears throat> board of health meeting and did it on our own. I thought because it, it really does encompass the economic, it, it encompasses everything about our town. Right. So, so uh, Jeff, yes. you talk you talked to our businesses that this uh, order would uh, would affect today, yesterday. Uh, yesterday. Yep. And they said. <laughs> uh, they they said that they understood, um, and some of them may have thought it was an enforcement call because they talked about their protocols and how safe they're being and um, oh. how few, how they don't even reached the 25% capacity limit. So they really didn't, uh, most of the ones that I talked to didn't have any concerns with, uh, with e either of the two things that were being recommended. That's From what I understand, some of them weren't even closing late anyway. They were already, they, stick to, they stuck to the 930. Right, and one of them is closed for a hiatus too, so. That's a that two helps. of them, Bubs and um, oh, that's right, Bubs is closed Bubs too, right? And the Blue Herring Blue are Herring, both closed, yep. so that helps. Yes, and I, I think Bruce Bruce wanted to say something. Yeah, I'd just yeah, like I'd to, just like, I'd like to I'd move like, that we um, move this as a motion, and uh, I think it's a good idea to just be safe and it's going to protect the townspeople as well as the students. Okay, thank you, Ken. I uh, second that motion. Okay. All right. Does anyone have any discussion or any um, thing to to add to this? The penalties and the enforcement are the same as everything we've ever done. It's just you guys are seeing it probably for the first time. I, I would just I would like to mention too that. We will only be enforcing the penalties in the town and refer other issues to the, the staff at UMass if they want to take further action against the students. And we also only enforce penalties on an absolute last, uh, last basis. That is not our Penalties are not our goal here. This isn't like a money-making thing. Um, enforcement is our goal. So it, it, if uh, compliance, excuse me. So what we, what hap, you know, what we do to get compliance is, is really, if the people comply, there, in, there are no penalties. That's, that's not what we're here for. Uh, Caitlin. Yes. Uh, I have a question. Um, is this town officers uh, still uh, under uh, sworn under uh, assistant uh, bill, uh, health inspectors or? The police, yes, they are. Oh, good. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so um, we can take a vote. Then uh, it was uh, seconded. So uh, all in favor of it, the um, emergency order temporarily applying reduction of capacity limitations and associated rules to local COVID-19 safety rules and implementation of early closures. Aye. 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 Okay, so Ken Couche. Aye. Bruce Bennett. Aye. Caitlin Rock, three to zero. So that will be in place as of uh, February, um, ninth at 5 a.m. Thank you very much. All right, All right. We, thanks. We're finished. Thank you. All right, thank you. Yeah, we, <clears throat> Buckman, for your time. Yep, thank you.
Um, Thanks, uh, Jeff. Well, thank you. Oh, Jeff, too. <laughs> Laura, are you still out there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, do you have anything else you want me as well? We'll just wrap up the COVID topic now. <clears throat> no, that pretty well covered it. <laughs> <laughs> just figure that check, you know. Yep. All right, thanks. Yep. How about you, Jeff? Anything else on COVID? Uh, you no, know, uh, hopefully people heard or received the code red alert that went out tonight. Um, just want to make sure that people are aware that uh, starting this week, there for eligible people, though, that's anybody in phase one or people, residents 75 and over, um, in addition to the mass vaccination sites at, at UMass um, and in Springfield, uh, the Eastfield Mall, there the Greenfield Senior Center is going to have a clinic and we have uh, links on the website and that's um, you, you can also call either the, the South County Senior Center or Life Path. Both of those phone numbers are available on the website as well. Um, if you need help registering online. Um, and if you can't find those numbers, then you can certainly uh, call us in the town offices and we can connect you with them as well. But there is a, a clinic um, a, that's gonna be starting um, this, this week. Uh, up in at the Greenfield Senior Center. So. All, right. All right, thanks. All also, right. also, also, David, just, just to yeah. remind people, you can also look at receiving vaccinations at the Greenfield CVS. The big Y is also available uh, to make appointments. You can also um, go down to Springfield to Eastfield Mall. You can head out to Pittsfield. They have one out. They they did 800 last Thursday. They went through uh, Pittsfield, and there were people from Northfield there when I was up there. So there are options. Um, I would tell you the recommendation is that you go online, try to make an appointment make an appointment wherever you can, and then get there. Um, I know we're gonna start the week of the 15th over at Treehouse, um, but there are a limited number of vaccinations. So don't, you know, just don't, and, and it's open up to the public. So again, try to, try to use in, if you're, if you wanna, if you want a vac vaccination, and you're having trouble, please contact Town of Sunderland and or the Senior Center, and we'll do whatever we can, or Life Path, and we will do whatever we can to help you get an appointment. You can also call 211 for more information, too. That's true. Yep. Absolutely. Thank point. you, Lori. Yep, you're welcome. But, it, but, it, but again, the idea is that um, if you want a vaccination, we encourage people to get their vaccinations, um, but you, you're going to have to you have to put some time in. And if you can't, um, you have trouble getting online or whatever, please let us know. And either the center center senior center, Life Path, or the town will try to help you as well. Thanks, Tom. <clears throat> All right. Any other uh, COVID updates or comments? All right, thanks. <clears throat> Hopefully we'll have some better news when we're all back together next week. Mm -hmm. You know, keep our fingers crossed. <clears throat> I know I say that every week, but you know, <laughs> it's like, uh... <clears throat> all right. Um, thanks for hanging on there, Board of Assessors. Why don't we hop on down to you guys? Okay, this is the Assessor's Office um, fiscal year 2022 budget request. Um, the first account is the Board of Assessors stipend um, for fiscal year 2022, where we are requesting $8,721. Um, that's level funding. There is no increase, and um, there's no COLA in, um, included with that figure. <clears throat> the 
The next account is the Assessor's Administrative Assistant. For fiscal year 2022, we're requesting $20,675. Um, the justification is it's based on last year's pay increase. And um, there's also, this one has no COLA added to it. So there is a little, there's a 12.5% um, increase to that, to that item. Um, the next one is general expenses. We are requesting, excuse me, $1,800. Um, there's no change in that, and, and that pays for supplies and professional development. I know UMass offers classes, and the Franklin County Assessor's Office also has classes, um, just to keep just to keep up to date with with all the changes we have in assessing. Um, the next, the next account is computer support. We're asking for $9,200. Um, there's no change, change in that account. It's, um, it's for tech support, and um, there's a fee to write the code for the nightly uh, permit link upload. And there's also a, they also have a $500 annual permit link um, fee. So. Um, you know, we all know computers, keeping these things up and running, it, it's expensive, it costs money. Um, the next one is the tax map updates. This year's request is 2100 That's up um, $125, um, or if you want to look at it, 6.3%. Um, you know, the, these tax maps are really, really important to the assessors and uh, anyone that comes into the into the office to see if there's any um, changes, boundary changes. Um, you know, it's a really important part of assessors, um, the tools that we use to to keep um, boundaries up to date and property properties up to date. And uh, the final one is the valuation vendor. It's, it's a we're in a reval year for 2022. And we are requesting $8,750. Um, the company we use is Bishop hey. and Associates. They're um, they're going to do a, a full a full reval of the town, and um, we're requesting $8,750. Um, it's it's a lot of work to reval <clears throat> to check all the all the properties and revalue them. Take a look at the revalues and what's going on. Um, so we are once again we're requesting eight thousand seven fifty dollars. Oh, if so, if somebody could just mute their line there. Whoever's not talking, that'd be greatly appreciated. Thanks. Okay, um, that, that's that. all I have for for our budget. There's um, six items. Uh, just for the folks on the line too, how often do you do the revals? Every three years. Okay. Thanks. Just in case somebody's wondering about that. Thanks. So you sort of see that spike up and down every three years. Right. Right. Um, the folks will go out and check properties to see if there's is there anything that we are missing that that could be um, taxed. If there's any, you know, new val new property that has, um, you know, put up a shed or a barn or or an right. addition that we don't have on our books, you know, and, and yep. catch that catch that increased value and add it to the taxes. So right. that, that's another important um, item that the assessor's department um, relies on. All right. Thanks. It's also a time if you want to plug anything for your uh, department, sort of a good time, a good opportunity. Okay. Um, well, Teresa, Teresa Foster, she's worked with the, the office for seven years she did a wonderful job um, but she has retired and we're <laughs> we're hiring so we yeah. we're looking we hired someone but this uh, person has not come into work yet so um, we might be behind on a few things um, just trying to get caught up with you know with all the paperwork that needs to be done that, that we're really not you know, we haven't done it in a long time, and we're not sure everything is in the office um, because it's been rearranged. So, um, 
um, you know, the paperwork going out might be a little late this year. Um, so. Okay. All right. Thanks. Anybody have any questions for the uh, the board of assessors at all, Elliot? Any of you guys on the finance committee? No. Okay. Uh, right. David, may I have a yeah. question? Yeah, Tom. Good. Hey, hey, Jimmy. Yeah, Tom. When you say uh, valuation, are, is are you doing the whole town or just a third of the town at a time? They're doing the whole town this time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's a little different than normal, right? Yeah, yes. Um, usually go in thirds. Yeah. But this, this year they're doing the whole thing. They're getting a bunch of folks in there, and um, they're just going to cover the whole town. Okay. And, you know, a lot, a lot of times they find things that we don't, that haven't been um, recorded. And, um, you know, it's a little extra money for the town. Thank you, Jimmy. You're welcome. All right, thanks for coming on, guys. Appreciate it. All right, thank you. Have a good night. You as well. All right, next up on our presentation, we've got the town clerk, and I see Wendy's iPhone out there. I am here. Hey, how are you? Good. Can you bring up um, Wendy's budget, Jeff, please? Yeah, I'm just, yeah. Yeah, just thanks. It's a very quiet budget year for me. Yeah. It's uh, so a little quieter decreased, than last year. I decreased in elections, um, but I didn't decrease as much as I normally would because I'm a little concerned about um, if we had to have a special town meeting or um, with COVID, the, it, it's a little more costly. So it's, it could be decreased more. I just wanted to be in a safe buffer. Um, so, so Tom Clark, can I ask you a question? I kind of started with the elections first, sorry. So is it, is it, is it better to keep going up and down every year or is it better just to hold a, a solid number? Um, it doesn't matter on my end because I go by the election, so it's more of a budgeting thing. I would think more for for you and the finance committee. I know Scott has said for years to keep it at one number. So, well, I, I'm just I'm just wondering. In, instead of instead of you know, if if you don't have the elections, you don't use the money. The the money just gets rolled back into the uh, in, into the general fund. But I mean, you know. We, we always have these discussions, especially at town meeting, when they when they see the fluctuation of, of and and they'll see a forty two percent change in the town clerk's budget. It's like, what what's happened? And it's like, well, it's just we have an extra one or two elections. I, I'm just wondering what's the best way to do that. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> I guess this year we're kind of in the middle. Um, we didn't go down as much as we could have. But I didn't stay at the full amount either. And at Tom's point, that'll just roll back in if it doesn't get used. So, right. But at least you've got a little a little cushion in there in case. Well, it it help it helps with budgeting. It, it in the long run, right. it helps with our budgeting because it's something that's steady. Scott, you may want to talk about this, but when 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 you have a a a, a number that's consistent, it's much easier to work into into the budget because you're and but then all of a sudden from year to year you know you're looking at a thousand two thousand three thousand dollars whatever the number is it, it sometimes can put a, a a little hijink into the whole system so yeah you raise a good point if i could mr chair you yeah know, injecting that injecting that kind of triennial noise is something that people clamor for transparency air quotes but when you start talking about um a triennial election it becomes, oh, an exercise. Of course, there's an election. That's why. So. All right. Any Anything else, Wendy, you want to plug or talk about? Um, on on this one, um, I, I think I sent Scott 
a plug for the caucus and yep. he's got all the information for that. So I'll let that go. But the caucus is February 27th at 10. Yeah, we, we did that up early to make sure we got that out there. Oh. So yeah. Okay, yeah, that's great. Um, the only thing maybe is um, Chris Collins is looking into um, a communication with people in their cars. Okay. So if it is a rather cold February morning that people would be able to listen on their radios to what's going on and not necessarily have to stand outside okay. their car to, to hear. Oh, we'll keep our fingers crossed for a heat wave that week, you know. We'll I know, those, I know. <laughs> one of those rare like 70 degree February days. <laughs> I think everybody would be okay with, you know, 40, 30, 40. Yeah, no exactly. Wind. Right. right, no wind. That's the big right. thing. Yep, that would be and good. And the town clerk one is pretty level. Um, it, you know, this, the longevity pay, I, I guess, you know, there could, it could be called something a little different. Um, but that is in addition to the town clerk salary. So this would be the second year of, of that happening. Um, the other thing too is because later in the year, a 2% raise was given. And because my salary is with the, the, vote. the, the yeah, its own article. Right. The, uh, so there is a 2%. We just would need to add that 2% on um, this year's, okay. the, the 44. And everything else is basically the same. Like you said, quiet year compared to last year, so. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yep, all right. <clears throat> all right, thanks. Any, um, any other questions for Wendy, the town clerk? So if someone's interested in running for uh, one of these four open seats, how do they, how do they go about it? They'll, they should come to the election, um, the caucus on Saturday, the 27th at 10 a.m. behind the town offices and bring somebody to nominate them. And the caucus is basically an election before an election. You know, what we're trying to ensure is that we have people on the ballot and because these positions are important leaving them empty is is just never a good thing so it gives people time to think about if this is something that they really want to do and um you know the caucus then coming to the caucus and and volunteering or for one of these positions is is a great thing to do for your community now there are a, quite a few people, the most that I've ever seen getting off um, boards this year. Uh, I, I've never had this many. I don't know if it's a COVID thing or what, but um, so there are empty um, offices that the incumbents are choosing not to. It doesn't mean that those are the only offices available for somebody to run. Right. So um, all, all, you know, somebody wanted to run for assessor, they just because the incumbent is choosing to run doesn't mean that stops them from running. They can, they can do that. At the um, caucus, there's a vote. If the person that wins has caucus nominee by their name on the ballot and automatically goes on the ballot, the other person can choose to take, get 20 signatures on nomination papers, um, and they will also be on the ballot. Great. That's great. Thank Good you. Information. And just as a reminder to top that off, uh, the town caucus will be uh, Saturday, February 27th at 10 a.m. out back in your vehicles. I'm back yeah. in town hall, I should say. <laughs> so... All right. All right. Thanks. Uh, Thank any questions you. from finance at all for Wendy? You guys all set? Okay. All right. 
All right. Thank Thanks, you. Honey. Have a good night. Thanks. You too. All right. Next up, I see our treasurer collector waiting there patiently. <laughs> Hi. Hey, how are you? How's you? everybody? All right, Hi, how are you? Good, and then good. Give Jeff a moment. Good. He'll, pull up, uh, he'll pull up your budget for you, sure. please. Okay. All right. Okay. Go ahead, ask me whatever you guys want to ask me. Um, What's the lottery numbers? As you can yeah. see, we've got. <laughs> yeah. I wish I knew those. <laughs> um, you said ask anything. As you can see, right. in June. I know. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so as you guys can see, we've got um, three loans that are going to be paid off by the end of the year, which is a good oh, thing. Look at that that is. Um, so we've got our library, our yep. we did add public the fire safety complex. Yep. And what is it? The sewer relining project, right? That one's just yep. a little too big for the space there. So that's why all the pound signs are in there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. Um, and then, of course, we added the fire truck. But yeah. Um, what else do you guys want to know? Um, can, you, can you scroll back up a little bit, Jeff, there? I see. So we've got library interest is down because of the loan on the prepayment on that, obviously. Yep. So huh? um, how much more are we, are, are we, uh, are we making, uh, how much are we collecting on the, uh, the 116 North? What was it? What did it used to be? The, the old name for it was. Oh, the. Sugarbush? Yes, Sugarbush. Right. Is, is, we're making nice collections on that, and that's finally increasing our... Yep. That's good. Yep. I think it isn't the upcoming year, the first like full year, I think, that we're seeing that on the numbers? Yes. Yeah, okay. As you can so, see, we had a few more years on that one. Anything, uh, anything you'd like to discuss or plug at all? Um, uh, not really on this one, I don't think. Okay. I tried to keep, I tried to keep the budget somewhat level funded. Yep. Bless you. Um, yeah, I, I tried, except, you know, the assessments for like the county retirement, stuff like that, of course, as we know, we have to just deal with right. that, but. All right, um, so not, not like something you can control yourself. Right, right. Yeah. Um, the only other thing that you guys will probably see an increase in is the um, tax title stuff. Okay. Uh, where are we? Oh. Oh. Uh. Retirements, Medicare. There it is. Keep going, yeah, Jeff. Okay, there it is. Oh. Yeah. So I've got a few. You'll see I bumped it up a little bit. Um, I've got a few people um, that I should be putting the tax title like from back from 2018. So I really want to get going on that and get that rolling. Okay. Um, as, you guys know that um, I did collect on um, 61 and 67 Old Amherst Road just recently. So that was cleared. So that was a big help. Okay. <clears throat> um, yeah, the nothing really is jumping out at me huge. If you guys got any questions, just Fire away. I'll answer what I can. <laughs> all right. Anybody have any questions at all? Wow, that was easy. All right, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. all right. Thanks. All right. All, all right, right guys. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Have a good night. All right. Thanks. Night, Heather. You too.
All right. Ne next up, Thank we you. got Tommy, our building commissioner. How are you there? Good. How's everybody doing? All right. Hey, Tommy. Anything you want to pull up at all, Jeff, for that? Or thanks. No, I. Uh, Jeff, did you put that on the on the spreadsheet, the little write up I did, or do we just have that spread the sheet there? Uh, I have both. Okay. Which uh, I didn't. I didn't get a spreadsheet. I don't think I just got two word documents. Right. I actually, you were in a meeting. I I came during my lunch from Hadley again to try to catch me up to you today. Um, to see before I had added that because I really wanted to talk to the board and all. Um about you know the position and what it pays and all i know last year with COVID and everything thought maybe things would be you know a lot less or whatever so what i did is i mean i have the fy you know what we brought in and i have the actual year because i figured that would show better for you know what things change with COVID. um so i could start with 18 when i when i started um if you take sugar bush out of the equation which was a lot of time um last year especially with inspections even though we had a, a third party i was there as much as i could with them and still had to do all the paperwork um we brought in a little under eighteen thousand that year in permits and then in um that's not uh fy that's the uh, year 2018 um 2019 we jumped to thirty two thousand five hundred and thirty nine dollars brought in um and this year, 2020, the year 2020, we actually only went down under $2,500. Um, we still brought in $30,067.50. Um, so it really didn't slow up at all. It seems um, people are home more and there's more, not almost complaints, but a lot of questions what they can do. And, and a lot with the zoning now is picked up definitely over the last three years. Um, so basically I'm at the point where what my salary is, which, you know, I love my job. I love working, you know, <clears throat> it's all good people to work for and all, but in my 15 hours, which, you know, really isn't enough on average a week, but I'm going to put in what I need anyway. It comes out to 2805 an hour that, you know, the position pays. Um, and just to give some, you know, some things, my alternates, you know, get 38 per inspection per hour. Um, you know, the plumbing electrical get, 85%. Um, we just went, they had the alternates were, were across the board. So, I mean, my salary there is at $41 an hour. Um, and the alternates went from 30 to 38 to all to 48. Um, and we're actually lucky to get, uh, Peter Murphy is, is going to help out in Hadley as well. So, um, West Hampton, you know, all the, all the people are 50 Southampton is 40 and East Hampton is 45. For any of those so i know with budget and all with with covid it's it's tough but we really didn't we didn't slow down at all i was just as busy this year and and just wanted to bring before we came up with the final budget you know what we could do <laughs> you know to bring that all out to you again thanks appreciate that thanks <clears throat> Do you want to pull up um, the budget there? Hey, Jeff, I believe I'm scheduled. Like I'm going to speak with the personnel tomorrow night. Um, I think we were going to introduce it to the personnel committee. We were supposed to have a meeting last week and then it was canceled because of the weather. Um, if you want to, uh, Come talk to them. Um, I, I could certainly send out the Zoom link, but yeah, I think that last year um, you raised this as well, and the, and the select board asked about the personnel committee, so we wanted to get that um, in front of them too. So I think they're uh, five tomorrow, right? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll send you the the Zoom link. Great, thank you. Yep, Cindy had mentioned it, and if, if you if you don't mind me going on it, that would be great, so I could answer any questions in that. Okay. So this is sort of the the expense uh, lines of the budget. Okay. 
I, I, I apologize. I should have had the other sheet filled out, but I didn't know at this point, you know, what the, the, some options, um, you know, um, plumbing electrical inspector said, well, you know, maybe if you went with a percentage like they do, then the town has nothing to lose. And, you know, if you had a less stringent year, you could, it, you know, it would work out both ways, but I don't know, you know, where the town's thinking of going. Um, Hadley wanted to, to speak with, you know, Jeff about merging. Um, they, they almost made me give up the position, but it, um, right now their board, I believe, especially after the next election is fine. I, I get my work done in both, uh, municipalities, so they're fine. Um, I don't, I don't think it would be the best move. It would be costing a lot more even for you to merge because they, they'd want to add another position, which we need in Hadley. Um, but basically you would be, you know, you probably have to double what, what it's costing you now for an inspector. Um, so I don't know, that'd be something between Jeff and the administrators to present to both boards, but um, with our switch now with the administrator, she doesn't have time <laughs> to deal with that, I know. So Tommy, if I could, I see this one here on 85% of, you know, under option two, that doesn't help, that doesn't help you a bit when it comes to zoning enforcement or any of that, because there's no permits. Well, that's why there was a stipend. I just, yeah, I asked yeah, I around, it. you know, cause they've never, you know, they don't do that anymore. I mean, right. you're one of the only towns that the inspectors years ago, um, you know, they did it with the building inspectors and all. East Hampton was one, I know. Um, but so you, it comes out to 60, 40, 50, 50, um, you know, 60, 50, whatever percent on building and the rest is zoning. Yep. And the town is never compensated for that. So it's like, you know, paying your clerk, right. um, you know, the money's not going to come in for that. So it's hard for me to justify all the time spent on that you know, with the money coming in. Yep. Yep. I mean, this was just some options and it's, this is from last year. Um, you know, any other community, the a salary commissioner gets a, you know, a stipend back when I was in East Hampton, I, you know, there was a salary um, and I had a travel stipend, a phone stipend, um, you know, two years ago, it was 140 for travel a month and, and 50 for the phone. Um, and we don't have any of that stuff. So it was just kind of showing you what other communities and, and if we could start, you know, if it's possible with the budget to start and, and move towards something like this or, or, you know, move forward anyway. Yep. yep. Different structure. Okay. I appreciate the opportunity to review it with you. Thank you. Well, we'll get to talk about it tomorrow night at the uh, personnel committee. So, all right, thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> Anything else you want to uh, cover or talk about? Nope. I uh, just if you had any other questions or um, what your your thoughts or ideas, I guess w will you be on that meeting tomorrow night, or is it something I could bring forward, or Jeff could that you have for you or the finance committee have for an opinion on it? I'll be on there tomorrow. So oh, good. Uh, I'll be the select boards rep on the personal committee, so I'll be on there. So uh, just out of curiosity, do you know, is Francis still attending the personnel committee meetings regularly? Uh, I haven't seen him in the last couple, have we, George? Yeah, I know he's been kind of busy. Yeah, I know George is on. He'll be on the uh, personnel committee meeting tomorrow, too. So oh, we haven't seen Francis in a while. I know. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, I, I, yeah, he hasn't been at, at finance either in a while, so I need to send out some communication because we need to have someone present there. Yep. Thanks. All right, thanks. All right, anybody um, have any other questions for uh, Tom? <clears throat> nope, all set. Great. Thanks, Tommy. All right, thanks. thank you. All, all right, have a, have a good night. night. You too. Yeah, you too, bye now. All right, George, last but definitely not least, especially these days. <laughs> you get a little break before tomorrow, right? <laughs> yeah, half a day. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> All right. Is that is that the whole thing or is it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I was just going to ask him to shrink it down a little bit, but he's getting up to fix the lights. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> as we all have to do. <laughs> exactly. Can you can you squeeze that down just a little bit, Jeff? Usually Hopefully, you're asking we... me to make it bigger. I know, I know. Well, we're trying to get the whole thing in. Hopefully, we can, if it that may be too small, but all right. In the meantime, George, let her rip. What do you got? So basically, I mean, this is pretty much close to level fun. I've asked for a couple, couple uh, extra, a little bit of extra money and a couple line items. Um, our seasonal wages, I've asked for an extra thousand. That sh that'd give us like an extra three hours a week, I think. Of uh, help through the summertime. Okay. <laughs> um, the tree warden expense, I've added sixteen hundred to that, and that basically gives us one whole day of of tree work, an extra day of tree work. Okay. Uh, the price of tree work is is starting to go up and up. So, if we had a lot. How's that been this year overall compared to last year? Say, um, we're we've spent quite a bit so far. Um, We've been getting a lot of a lot of wind storms and stuff this year, so it's it's making it a little tough, but it's not yeah. too bad. Okay. I've been getting the uh, Eversource to cut some trees down and stuff for us too, so that saves us a little bit of money in the in the long run. That helps. Yep. That better. Well, we just got that dialogue box up there. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Acts wonky sometimes. <clears throat> hey, there we go. Perfect. Look at that. Were were we able to save money at all this year with the the fuel prices being so much lower because of the the pandemic? Yeah, and I mean, I think I turned. I can't remember how much money I turned back. It's it's hard to tell if it's all in fuel because that line item is the the, the highway department expense that has right. the machinery and the fuel in it all at once. So it's kind of all combined. Um, but I think we did spend a lot less in fuel this year through the summertime. We got decent prices through this year. So our bid till July, um, I think we're paying $1.99 for diesel fuel. And we're paying a variable for gasoline. Mm -hmm. In the last few times I've ordered it, we've been anywhere from like a dollar seventy-eight to a dollar like eighty-three gallon. So it's, it hasn't been too bad. I haven't ordered in the last few weeks, and I know it's gone up some. So yeah, I know sure what it's going to be. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, every uh, every time I see it go up by five or ten cents, I flashback memories to five bucks a gallon yeah yeah exactly you know and the price of parts and stuff are, are starting to go up with along with everything because of the covid that things are hard to get and they seem to not be making them and they're increasing our prices you know some stuff is going up a, a quarter some is going up a half so it's you know it's hard to say how are we doing for um salt and sand supplies uh, I think we're doing pretty good right now. I just ordered a couple loads today, so they came in. Um, I, we've been doing pretty good. It's, you know, we're little storms cost us just as much as big storms. I mean, we got to yeah. treat it twice. We go out pre-treat and then we treat at the end of the storm too. So yeah, it costs us about the same for a big storm as it does a little storm. I think you're looking at two to four inches, maybe or so tomorrow. I think last I heard. Yeah, that's what they're saying. Again, um, enough to make a mess. Yeah, and right. then same thing Friday. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. The globe uh, just before the meeting had it going up to four to six for our area, but did they? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Here's the season. It is, it is. And then we kind of got off last year fairly easy, so. So, George, on the, on, the, on the expense side, no real surprises, just some incremental increases because of materials, yep. I see that. Yep. Um, on the capital side, we, we did a truck, pseudo truck replacement mid-year, right? Correct. Yeah. How's that machine working out? It's actually been a good truck. It's a nice little truck. Okay. Good. So, I mean, it, I think it was a pretty, pretty good purchase that we did. And uh, 
it'll get us by till you know it's time to purchase our next one here in the next couple two years i think three years mm -hmm. okay done paying for the other one on a separate subject the coming year we're going to see i would imagine some demands on uh the time of the department and certainly of you with respect to one uh north main street reconstruction and mm -hmm. 120. yeah It'll be a little, it'll be a busy year this coming summer. I mean, we'll have the complete streets projects on South Main Street, mm -hmm. Silver Street, South Silver, South Silver, North Main Street, yep. <laughs> 120. Yep. So and we'll then be, the... they'll be bombing around all over the place trying to check things out. So, okay. <clears throat> all right. Anybody have any other questions for George or anything? All good. All set. All right. All right. Thanks, George. See you tomorrow night. <laughs> Did you want to go over any of the capital stuff? <clears throat> sure. So shouldn't, I mean, shouldn't be that many. Yeah. No, nah, I, I think the pickup sweeper. I'm gonna I'm gonna table that one. I don't think mm -hmm. we. Okay. This is a good year. Uh, we don't really need it, I guess. Um, lawnmower. I put that back in there again this year. Um, I know we've talked about it the last couple of years um, to do some mowing around the shop and stuff like that. This is a bigger, bigger mower that I chose just in case we do end up eventually looking back at doing a another hire for us slash maintenance person. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And we'd have this equipment at the, you know, to do it. That'd be one less thing we'd have to buy at the time. So. And those 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 mowers have a pretty good shelf life to them. They they're you know 10, 10 years at least on those. If you, as long as you take care of them and do the repairs on them when needed. Yeah. Uh, single axle dump truck. You know that's just back on here. Just just to know, let you guys know that. You know, I think for the three years. I think the other trucks paid for two years. Mm -hmm. uh, I put the milling head back on here. Um, I've talked to Deerfield about maybe sharing it with them and okay. so, so that might be a possibility, you know, just that way. They George, uh, much. On, on the milling head, if I could, Mr. Chair. Yeah. George, the, the, the cutting surface is, uh, I think it was a foot, right? Or was it 16 inches? Yeah, it's a 12 inch one. 12 I mean, inch. You, can go, you can go bigger. The machine that we have is a high flow and it's only 27 gallons a minute. Yeah. Um, so you have to go within that range of what what the head or what the machine can do right so too big obviously the machine the head's not going to work as well as it is supposed to because it doesn't have enough gallons per minute yeah yeah so and, that's why i went with that 12 inch one and from a, a, a and not ever having run a road mill i've run other mills but not ever run a road mill i'm curious about is there constraint about being a basically a foot I'm, I'm looking at a laptop that's basically a foot no you can what you can do is you can make your your path and then you can set over a little bit and make your pet next path right next to it so if you've got an area that's you know two feet wide then you just you run that area on one on the one side of it and then you just pick it up back up and go over it on the other side what's the life cycle of the head um she they could they could last 20 years you know, as long as you do the maintenance on them, they are they are little wear and tear items. I mean, the teeth and all that stuff and the yeah. barons. So they just, could, yeah, as long as you maintain them, I think you can get quite a bit of use out of it. And the kind of the kind of demand uh, for this piece of equipment, I mean, is it sixteen thousand dollars that we'll use twice a year? And no, I think we'd use it quite a bit. You know, especially this time of year when when potholes seem to be yeah coming out of the ground like crazy because of the frost and all the, the water getting in there. Um, yeah, I think the, the winter time would be the most used out of it. All right, thank you. Yep. If you had to make a quick estimate of like how many times a year, would you guess? 20, 30 times maybe. And then if I could sh share it with Deerfield, it'd be a would be a huge, you know, a huge savings because they're actually looking to purchase a, a whacker um, on their coming fiscal year. Um, mm -hmm. 
their their sidewalk machines kind of tired and theirs broke down so they borrowed ours on one of the storms and they kind of liked it so oh yeah planning on getting that same machine so so it just attaches on the whacker yep that was his yep. hydraulic attachment yep. okay nice well, keep us posted about that shared use. I, I, yeah, yeah, well, I got to talk to Kevin some more about it and give him some uh, some numbers on it and stuff like that and see if that's an interest of him. That'd be good. And then there's one in here for a, for the, I know we did a generator a while ago, but we've been having some, some issues with the one we got from Mount Holyoke College because the way the generator was, is set up it's a, it's like a they split the power in it so the way it was built it wouldn't it wouldn't go to the 277 480 so i got a military generator and then that one they would we could we could bump it up to that 277 480 but it'd be at the very top end of that generator it's power mm. and it's a generator that you cannot put an automatic start on so it's it'd be more of a pain in the butt yeah, to go yeah a, little, a little over twelve thousand in that um in that account right now the generator that's there from mount holyoke is actually finally hooked up to my building um and that one runs mine no problem it won't run everything but it runs most of the stuff in the building um so what I was asking is for this 8,000 is a little bit more to purchase a brand new generator for the public safety building. Um, it's going to be a 30 KW propane generator, less maintenance. Um, they run a little bit more efficient than the diesel. So that's why we're asking for this 8,000. That's going to include a little bit more money to help pay for the generator plus installation. Okay. Jeff, any any uh, resiliency grants that we can uh, look at for this? I talked to um, the chief fire chief about this, and he is uh, asked his the uh, uh, what's her name? Um, Emergency management director. Lori. That's it. Lori, yeah. Asked her asked her to look into the Maya. Yep. Is it Maya? No. Uh, FEMA. FEMA. And he found yep. something in there that might pay a few thousand of it or something like that. Cool. Um, yeah. and we're looking at some other other stuff too. So. If it chips away at it, that would help. Yeah. And I figured if I had a, a little bit extra at the end of the end of the year and I talked to I talked to both Jeff or I talked to Steve and Eric about if they had a few thousand dollars extra in their budget at the end of the year, maybe we could put that towards the purchase of the new generator towards that 12,000 because the generator is about 14.5 somewhere in there. Right. Um, if we could put it towards that and then ask for 5,000 to get it installed, you know, then we'd drop that number down. Okay. So we've been kind of looking at different ways to see if we can pay for it without having to ask for too much extra money, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and we did we did have a little bit left over in the municipal vulnerability preparedness planning grant and okay. asked if we could apply that to this because it seemed like a, a vulnerability and it would help us prepare. Yep. Uh, but they said that's a planning grant and right. <laughs> this is right. implementation. Yeah. So you can't mix the money. So we're trying to find another use for, for those okay. funds so that they don't go disappear. Cool. But we did ask about that. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Be nice to have all that on backup power. Yeah. And the next one is uh, the loader. Um, just to oh, yeah. put it, put it on the radar. That's, that's going to be coming up sometime soon. That's a dump truck. How much is a loader? Yeah, I was gonna say that that'd be a good, that'd be a cheap loader. <laughs> uh, loader is about two hundred and ten ish. Nice. Okay. 
When do we get that other one now? It's been a while, I think, hasn't it? The one that I, we have now, it's a 2000. Yeah, 2000, okay. What year, George? It's a 2000. It saw it zip by during the other storm, I think, so. Yeah, it's got close, it's, I think it just about broke 8,000 hours on it. That's okay. usually, when, usually when towns start getting rid of them because things start happening. <laughs> no. But it's decent shape still, so we uh, keep it maintained and keep it running. All right. Six. All right. Thank you, George. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Anybody got any other questions for George? No. Nope. All right. Thanks, George. Have a good one. You too. All right. That concludes our budget uh, discussions for this evening. So and we covered our COVID update already. Um, so that brings us down to select board and town administrator updates. <clears throat> so I'm looking at, uh, I'll, I'll start with Scott since you're next to me in the Hollywood Squares <laughs> format there. <laughs> Actually, I, I don't have anything this week. Uh, okay. have, we had a uh, capital planning committee meeting last week. And one thing I'd like to get on our next agenda is a discussion about uh, borrowing authorization to fund capital and I'm working with Jeff on what those mechanisms can be. When I say mm -hmm. a borrowing authorization for capital, I mean to put in the capital stabilization fund and what that mechanism looks like, what its tax impact is, and what kind of uh, size would that be? Okay. I think the board should the board and, and uh, the finance uh, committee should be involved in that discussion. What does it look like? Remember, we raised basically a hundred and this year one hundred and eighteen thousand dollars on the levy, uh, as you could see in 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 George's highway superintendent's presentation. That you know we have upcoming years of a quarter of a million dollars for a single piece of equipment. Yeah. So all those kinds of years take energy and effort out of the remaining elements of the capital plan. Right. So we've done very good. We've done very well at um, picking away at some of the low hanging fruit. Uh, but what would it look like if we took, uh, make up a random number, you know, $90 million and threw it in the capital, you know, what would it look like? Does it require an override? Yes, no. You know, what, what, what can be afforded under the current rate? And then what value does that play going forward, in particular at the rates that we have now, meaning borrowing rates? Right, so, I was gonna say they're low, so. Again, ran, yep. random, random number exercise, but yeah. I think conceptually, it's gonna be an important discussion to have with the town because we, 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 we have, a, we have a, a stable need that has steadily been in excess of our ability to go for it. Right. So we're doing a little bit with buildings this year. You're going to see some at this school through the, the administration, both school buildings. But you know our own uh, capital needs are still basically a hundred and say one hundred twenty thousand dollars plus whatever percentage comes out of free cash. Yep. Can't really there. get well past that um, program. I think this year as well, and this isn't a sales pitch, but as you saw in the treasurer collector's presentation, this year we have a pretty good chunk of debt coming off. Right. So from a stable a tax base stability, base rate stability, maybe it is a good year to borrow. And again, $90 million. I'm just, I know that's wildly exaggerated. Just <laughs> Right, just for sake of argument. For the sake of argument. Yep. Put, in, put in a value in there that keeps the tax rate stable and feeds a charge of money into capital stabilization through a, a borrowing authorization. I wouldn't think it would be a band. Remember the capital, stable, capital definition is a value of a purchase value, but also a life cycle. That is something you wouldn't buy every year. So right. if, you went, if you looked at a five-year borrowing or a 10-year borrowing, you could target it for some of these small pieces of, uh, small pieces of project work that we end up either deferring or, or um, you know, scraping the money together for. In that mechanism, it's important to bear in mind that town meeting is still by two-thirds because it's 
into and out of stabilization, the appropriating body. So it's not like the board's doing it or F or the finance committee's doing it. It would only be town meeting able to do it. All right. Anyway, I want to have that discussion in the next couple of weeks. No, it's a good discussion. And, and like you said, it, it tends to keep, stabilizes the noise in the budget. Yeah. It makes yeah. things a little easier to plan. You know, we're fortunate to have these nice new buildings that we've paid off, knowing that we've paid off 18 years of debt on those nice new buildings. Yeah. Right? Yep. So it, that's important to bear in mind. They aren't nice. They're nice, but they aren't necessarily new anymore. It's true. I put new in quotes. Right, right. <laughs> you know, right. Yep. Exactly. It does creep up on you. Yep. Anyway, thank you, Mr. Uh, Chair. All right. Thanks. Tom? What's up there, David? All right. Uh, the only thing I've got is a personnel committee meeting tomorrow night. So, um, Jeff, turn that over to town administrator updates. Uh, yeah, the, the only thing I wanted to mention was that uh, the 10th, which is Wednesday night, um, is a CPA meeting. Um, and they're going to be discussing the project. I believe they got five applications, um, three of which were from the town. Um, one was to do repointing work at the Graves Memorial Library based on the uh, Roy Brown um, building assessments. Thank you for uh, that, Jeff. You're welcome. Um, there was another uh, for uh, contingencies related to the bathroom redesign in case uh, the building footprint needs to be expanded a little bit. It, it sounds like there was some concerns that we might not be able to get every, um, maintain the same number of bathrooms and make them ADA or not bathrooms. Uh, oh, facilities. Fixtures. <laughs> facilities are uh, plumbing fixtures, we'll call Thank them. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fixtures. <laughs> Yep. Um, and, and thought that that was important and it may only require a little bit, but, um, and then, oh, the third was for the irrigation system for the soccer field and the second baseball field, the park grant included the digging of the well, and we yep. figured while we're back there, let's try to get the irrigation system in as well. So, um, those were the three town projects and I believe that the library and highway department are also doing one for um, the protection of the elm tree in between the town office building and the oh. library. Yep. Um, and for, I don't, I'm not sure what the fifth one was. Okay. And for folks who don't know, that's a uh, pre-Dutch elm disease tree that's managed to survive. So one of, is it, we have, two, we have at least two in town, right? Three. That are three. Okay, yeah, I was gonna say the other ones three, near the millstone, three, right? Three, three that are three that are treated every year. Yep. Yep. So that's yeah, one on one on North Main, one on South Main, and one over here. It's nice to see those still there. So, uh, and sorry, what one other thing is just that um, next week is going to be my hopefully final last procurement class, and that's all day Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday live so i will hey. i will be available but um busy class. You'll, you'll be calling us at the end of the day just wanting to talk to somebody yeah. <laughs> so. oh yeah all right well thanks good, good luck with that last run <laughs> all right <clears throat> um other than do we have any public comments at all. Yeah. all right. I think that, that wraps up our regularly scheduled event. So our next meeting, uh, let's see, we're going to be closed Monday, February 15th. So we're scheduled right now to, um, and that's because of President's Day. Our next meeting would be Tuesday, the following day, February 16th, instead of the usual Monday date. So great. And just a pitch for that is uh, Senator Comerford and Representative Blaze are going to give a legislative update. That's right. That's right. Excellent. So be good to get some updates and see what's going on uh, east of Worcester. So now we can ask about police reform. There you go. 
Yeah. All right. And how it's going to affect our community. Yep. Detrimentally. Mm hmm. Budget wise. Yeah. Yep. That's it. In my opinion. It, I mean, opinion is it, it's a question of numbers. So, right. I suppose the the adjective detrimental can be uh, opinionated, but yep. increasing costs that will it, it will incur on our community is is a neutral way to put it, I suppose. Right. You can't. I mean, those are just numbers. It's just math. You can't yep. get around that. So, right. Yep. Good Thank point. you. I'll. Uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to email Francis and see if he's going to be uh, checking in at personnel tomorrow. If he's not, I think I might see if I I can stop in. Okay. All right. Okay. Appreciate it, Alec. Good night. Good night. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. Um, otherwise, if, uh, if we're all done, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. I like that hand. I noticed Second. the hand. That's Left right. Hand. That's right. All right, all those in favor of adjourning at uh, 7.50? What if I go like this? Hi, or slide <laughs> it back and forth. <laughs> all right, Tom, was there an eye? Aren't you paying attention, Dave? I was looking at, I was looking at Scott's hand. Go back to recording hand. and you can see the recording. Uh, no, just giving you grief. All right, all those in okay. favor was aye, so we're, we're adjourned. Thanks. I